In this video, I'm going to be showing you when Bitcoin started and why you should care. Welcome back. I'm George Levy and I help people understand and use blockchain, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. In this video, we're going to be talking about when Bitcoin started and why you should care. To start, I want to position exactly what we mean by when Bitcoin started. Now, you could look at a specific date and that's what you're looking for when you're looking at when Bitcoin started. But I want to point out to you that more importantly than that is the moment when Bitcoin started when you look at the big picture. Now, let's start with the fact that I celebrate Bitcoin's birthday and I actually say publicly, happy birthday to Bitcoin twice a year. The first time is actually on October 31st, 2008. The reason I do that is because that was the date that the Bitcoin white paper, Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, was published. That was the first time that anybody heard about Bitcoin because that white paper talks about the entire vision of what Bitcoin eventually became. That white paper was published by someone or something called Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, I say something or someone because to this day, nobody knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is or what Satoshi Nakamoto is. We don't know if it was a man. We don't know if it's a woman. We don't know if it's a group of people going under the name Satoshi Nakamoto. All we do know is that a white paper was published and in that white paper was the entire vision of what Bitcoin would be. Now, key things I want to point to this position to you is we have not heard from Satoshi Nakamoto in a very long time. Satoshi Nakamoto was very, very public, was actually in a bunch of forums and then suddenly disappeared. We haven't heard any further about Satoshi, but this is important because the reason why Bitcoin was created is if you position yourself as what the world was going under in October 2008. October 2008 was a massive financial crisis where all the world's stock markets and all the financial markets worldwide had completely collapsed. People were losing their homes. People were losing their jobs. The entire world was in huge disarray. People were committing suicide because things were so bleak. It was a really terrible time when you're talking about the economy. But in the middle of all this, this white paper was published. Now, what's fascinating is that the second date that I want to talk to you about is January 3rd, 2009. January 3rd, 2009 was the first block on the Bitcoin blockchain. What we know today as Bitcoin and the Bitcoin network began with that first block, which is known as the Genesis block, on January 3rd, 2009. Here's what's fascinating about that block. That block on January 3rd, 2009 has a message hidden inside. That message was put there by Satoshi Nakamoto. The message says, Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks, which matched the cover for the Times newspaper of that day. Now, the reason why this is so important is that while the entire world was going through a massive financial crisis and people were losing their jobs and actually losing their homes, really terrible time, banks were getting bailouts. And that's the whole point that Bitcoin was supposed to address. You see, Bitcoin is decentralized money. What makes Bitcoin so valuable is that it's a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Why this is important is that let's look at money. If I want to send money to anybody else around the world over the internet, I need to use the services of a bank, a credit card, or some sort of third party like PayPal, a money transfer service. All of these control the transfer of money. I can't simply just send money to someone else somewhere else in the world over the internet without using the services of a third party like a bank or a money transfer system. Here's the key problem with that. The banks have all that control. The banks are the ones that have that money. If the bank doesn't want to let me do that money transfer, they seem simply refuse. If the bank refuses to do business with the other person that I want to be able to send the money to, the bank can also refuse to do that. Banks control money as we know it. Here's the thing. They can't control Bitcoin. Bitcoin is decentralized. If I want to be able to send Bitcoin to someone else around the world, all I need is their Bitcoin address and I'll be able to send Bitcoins directly to that person without having to ask permission, without needing to have any type of authorization. Nobody needs to approve me sending any amount of Bitcoin. Could be millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin to someone around the world and nobody can stop me from doing that. That's the power of Bitcoin. Bitcoin was designed to provide an alternative to the banking system, which is what the banks have. Right now, the problem is money as we know it 
is under the control of banks. In fact, if you have money, regardless of how much money you have, and you have it in the bank, you don't really have that money. Your bank does. And that's the issue. The banks have the money. With Bitcoin, you control your Bitcoin. And that is why Bitcoin is so important. So if we're looking at when Bitcoin started, I just gave you two dates. One of them is October 31st, 2008. The second one is January 3rd, 2009. Those are two important dates. But more importantly, it's look at the world that Bitcoin jumped into and the fact that it presents an alternative to all the financial systems. I hope you found this video valuable. If you like it, I encourage you to hit subscribe and hit notifications so you're notified every single time I publish brand new videos. I publish every single week and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And as I always say, we're changing the world one blockchain at a time. Thank you.